Wisconsin is an area rich in history, a place where immigrants from a lot of countries uh, came to live over the past 150 years. But soon, the language of Belgian descendants will fall silent. Local 5's Chris Schuller has more in his special report, Walloon, Wisconsin's Lost Language. Chris? Aaron, Belgian immigrants uh, who settled here brought along their traditions, their architecture, even their language. Yet within the largest Belgian settlement in the U.S. located right here in northeast Wisconsin, that language is in danger of fading away. Inside an old Door County Catholic church, once the hub for a thriving Belgian community, work is ongoing to preserve the memories of those who made this home. It's the largest uh, Walloon Belgian settlement in the country. It's interesting and it's unique and uh, we think it's worth, worth preserving and celebrating. Phil Chadoir is the director of the Belgium Heritage Center in Namur with a history of the thousands of immigrants who journeyed here in the mid-1800s is being documented and put on display. There's still a lot of evidence in the community about uh, the early settlers and uh, the story as to how they found this place. Enduring evidence of the many communities they founded in a 150 square mile area in Door, Kiwani and Brown counties, recognized as a national historical district in 1990. Having a place for the exhibits to tell the story how, why they came here, where they came from, why they settled here. Those immigrants that moved here brought along many traditions like this roadside chapel, which still exists today. They also brought their language, Walloon, which unfortunately is starting to disappear. We're Jews, as they will grow up here. Related to French, this oral language from southern Belgium found a new home in northeast Wisconsin. I think it sounds sort of melodic. Spoken universally by the families who settled in communities named Brussels, Luxembourg, and Wallain in honor of their homeland yet never written down. I couldn't even speak English when I started school. Over the years, as the young moved away or married outside of the community, they learned English. And as older residents died, Walloon became forgotten. It makes me feel sad. Sad that I can't. I'm sorry that I never taught my daughter. Mildred Destry is among the 30 to 50 people still living who can speak Walloon. There's only a few people that I can talk to that, you know, now already. Christine Shador is another. And it's sad to see that it's going to be lost. Which is why UW-Eau Claire professor Kelly Beers is getting involved. This past year, he and his students traveled here, meeting with over 20 people who know Walloon. We're recording uh, conversations between speakers of Walloon. Um, so that we can uh, study the language. The goal to create a written version of the Wisconsin dialect before the few who speak it pass away. And then create teaching materials for grade school children within the Southern Door School District. The community is really interested in uh, making sure that uh, even if nobody is going to be speaking it on a regular basis, that we have some sort of record of it. Bill Shador hopes to include his work in new exhibits under development for his center. Tell the, the Belgian story and have uh, exhibits here that the public can come and learn about it and, uh, and, and, and discover this unique uh, little hamlet that exists here. A place where Belgians settled over a century ago and their ancestors still live today. The largest concentration of Belgian descended uh, Americans in the U.S. per capita. Yet a community where the language of their forefathers is about to fall silent forever. It's a sad thing to think that it's going to die out. And Walloon is only spoken in southern Belgium, uh, northern France, and pockets of northeast Wisconsin only. Yeah, and you say there are only 30 to 50 people who speak Walloon left. It, that's what, well, that number is kind of in flux. I mean, you yeah. talk to the folks at the uh, Belgium Heritage Center, they'll tell you, yeah, about 30 to 50. You talk to the professor, though, who's, who's here uh, documenting uh, the speech digitally, he'll say uh, less than 100. So. Yeah, but there's a sense of urgency here because all the people who speak it are in their 80s, upper 80s. Yeah. Absolutely. And let's talk about that Belgian Heritage Center. Is it complete? No, no. They, uh, they are still uh, in the middle of a major uh, fundraising capital campaign. They have about $200,000 that they've used so far at the church. They're trying to raise another $700,000. They'd like to produce a documentary, uh, those interactive exhibits that we showed you uh, renderings of. They still haven't had those made. They'd like to get those completed.
We talked about the story all week. I asked Chris earlier tonight, <laughs> could somebody learn this language? Yeah. It's possible. Well, nice I could look for a teacher for you soon. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it soon, though. Chris, it great sounds story. like French. Very good. Thank you, Very Chris. Good. Thank you. All right.